Welcome to Click. I'm Spencer Kelly and welcome to the BBC's Broadcasting House in London. But what does the future of TV look like? Well, back in the 80s, the futurologists were telling us that one day we'd all be wearing one of these, exploring our own virtual worlds from the comfort of our own homes. The problem was, back then, VR was rubbish. So it went away, but not, as it turns out, for good. These days, the displays inside the goggles are much better, and the motion sensing technology is far more responsive. And that means virtual reality is back. And it's not just being used in video games. Dan Simmons has been to the Commonwealth Games in Scotland to witness a world first where the BBC is attempting to give you a ringside seat. It's the biggest sporting event Scotland has ever hosted. And for those responsible for broadcasting the Commonwealth Games, the aim is not solely to show what's here. It's to make some lucky people feel that they are. Inside the Hydro Arena, camera operators have been practicing their own floor routines to ensure smooth coverage of the gymnastics. But Stephen from the BBC's R&D team is setting up a different kind of kit. He's capturing and then sending a live 360 degree video signal out of the arena. To capture it all, this camera has seven lenses, six around the side and one on the top. Special software stitches together the seven video feeds on the fly to create an image like this. And to capture the roars and cheers, a spatial audio microphone records the sound from all directions. The action in the hydro is streamed live over the internet to the Science Centre, in this case just half a mile away. But, of course, theoretically, viewers could be anywhere with a stable internet connection. Oh! Just turned the road there. <laughs> it's really cool. It's weird. That's amazing. That's true. This is where the magic happens, creating the illusion that you're actually there are two screens inside the headset that show a small section of that 360 degree video. Motion sensors work out your head movements to show you what you'd be looking at as if you were there. Now, we've seen surround vision cameras before, but getting the footage to the audiences live with minimal time lag, around three or four seconds, is the impressive part. There's a trade-off, though. The engineers have found that the quality of the video needs to be reduced so it can be stitched together faster and sent across the net. So the picture isn't as sharp as we're used to. A problem exacerbated by the fact the screen is so close to our eyes. In future, higher powered processing and more bandwidth for each viewer could allow for more detail. For now, getting a smooth, reliable feed is more important. This is the first time that a major sporting event has been streamed live to a VR headset, something that could be an everyday reality in the future. We're sending the sound in a special format that lets us um, move that um, when you move your head. And that can, that can really add to the experience because you'll, you'll hear something that happens kind of over your shoulder and turn your head to go to, to look and see what's going on. So it's a, it's a really, people usually kind of just think of the, the video, video side of things, but the audio actually really adds to the experience. If you can see, you can see everything. <laughs> Of course, with a lot of money going into this area from broadcasters and web streaming companies, it's not just sporting events that invite our virtual presence. The R&D guys have been playing elsewhere. In, three, two, one, In the BBC newsroom, viewers can see their usual presenter, but also the remote-controlled cameras and glimpse into the director's gallery backstage. And out in the field with reporters, literally as part of BBC Two Spring Watch. Could this be the future of nature programmes? If viewers truly invest in its use, then these experiments today for the Commonwealth Games could be offered up for real in time for the next Olympic Games in just two years' time. Absolutely amazing. 